California, I've learned, is this, the pumpkin spice capital of the United States. According to Grubhub, no, it's nothing to be proud of. <laughs> Out of all the many states we have, and I think we're up to 50 now, our state, California, orders the most pumpkin spice stuff of any place. California, Oregon, and Washington are the top three states for ordering pumpkin spice food. I'm sure it's just a coincidence that we all have legalized marijuana. And... <laughs> You know, I have to say, I love pumpkin pie. It's one of my top three favorite pies, but I don't understand all the pumpkin spice. It's in everything now. It's like bed bugs. And I'm not talking... <laughs> I'm not just talking about lattes. Every year since Starbucks started this, there's a new and hard-to-believe pumpkin spice product. And this year, that product is pumpkin spice Spam, <laughs> which goes on sale Monday for a limited time. <laughs> They're only going to sell it till somebody dies. And then... <laughs> and the saddest part of it is, I'm going to try it. I'm going to slice into a sweaty block of meat that tastes like a seasonal gourd, and I'm going to eat it. Because I've given up. I've given up. I'm going to start grooming my, my beard with pumpkin spice beard oil. I'm, I'll have pumpkin spice kale chips for a healthy snack. I will apply pumpkin spice balm to my lips. <laughs> Because who wouldn't love to make out with a pumpkin? These are all real items, by the way. We didn't make these up. There's pumpkin spice Sudoku. There's pumpkin spice deodorant. There's make your own pumpkin spice lattes for dogs. Which, <laughs> of course, it's make your own. If you went in the store for that, they'd throw, throw rocks at you. But I don't know. Why do dogs need lattes anyway? All they do is lay around. We even have a pumpkin spice president now. It's too much. It's... The um, Make America Great Pumpkin was here in town raising funds for his campaign this week. And I guess he must have done well because he was spotted climbing aboard Air Force One. And look at this. He's got a wad of cash in his back pocket. <laughs> so one of the reporters asked him about it, and he said he keeps cash in his pocket to leave tips at the hotel when he travels. He leaves a tip for the maid with a note that says, sorry, the hand towels are orange now. <laughs> There's something, I have to say, there is something nutty and totally new and unexpected happening every day in this White House. Last night, you probably don't even know about this yet, last night we learned via the Washington Post that a whistleblower in the intelligence community filed a complaint against the president last month that was deemed to be credible and urgent by the inspector general. This complaint reportedly involves multiple acts by the president, including a uh, promise Trump made on a phone call with a foreign leader. This intelligence officer was so disturbed, he or she filed a formal complaint under the Secret Whistleblower Protection Act. But we learned today the White House helped the Director of National Intelligence decide not to share this blown whistle with Congress, which is what he should have done with a complaint of this nature. The president this morning moved on the story like a bitch. He wrote, Another fake news story out there. It never ends. Virtually any time I speak on the phone to a foreign leader, I understand that there may be many people listening from various U.S. agencies, not to mention those from the other country itself. No problem. <laughs> Knowing all of this, is anybody dumb enough to believe that I would say something inappropriate with a foreign leader? <laughs> While I'm such a... <laughs> uh, I'm dumb enough to believe it. I don't know what... I don't know about any of you, but... I am totally dumb. One of the reasons I'm dumb enough to believe it is because you remember that time in May of 2017 when you revealed classified information to a bunch of Russians in your office? That was a good one. This could be a big thing, by the way. This, this is going to be a tough one for the president to witch hunt his way out of because the inspector general who found this complaint to be credible and urgent was nominated by Donald Trump. He's one of his guys, and he made a statement today saying he disagrees with the decision to withhold the complaint from Congress. He thinks Congress should look at it, which is a whole thing unto himself. It suggests that no one can blow a whistle on the White House. And the other big question is, what was the promise, and who did he make it to? Now, our sources here at ABC have managed to uncover some exclusive footage of what they believe was the call in question. <laughs> with a foreign leader. It turns out it was a FaceTime call, and let's take a look at that now. As you know, we just came out with a fragrance. It's called Success by Trump, and it's sold at Macy's. So I hope you can go to Macy's and get the fragrance. It's a hot item. It's doing really well. They're having a lot of fun with it. I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's not my primary business, 
but it is a great fragrance. I'd like to say that if you put it on, anything you want will come true. He could even, even become president. That's our, that's our president now. <laughs> But what could Trump have possibly promised? There are so many possibilities. It really could be anything to anyone. So in times like, in uncertain times like these, we turn to a tried and trusted device, something we've developed here in-house. Guillermo, please bring in the wheels of deals. Now, as you can see, we have two wheels. On one wheel, names of world leaders Trump was most likely to have been speaking to. On the other wheel, the promises he could have made. And with that said, it's time to spin the wheels of deals. Spin the first one, Guillermo. And the first one says, you can spin the next one now, Kim Jong-un. OK, Kim Jong-un, he promised Kim Jong-un Tiffany's inheritance. Wow. Let's do it one more time, Guillermo. Trump promised. Let's see who he promised. He promised Prince Mohammed bin Salman a, a Kim Kardashian's phone number. All right, that's oh. fantastic. <laughs> you know it's going to be something like that, right? <laughs> but this is not a positive situation. On one hand, our president may have had, made a dangerous promise to a foreign leader. But on the other hand, he never keeps his promises, so we should be okay. This is one of those rare instances where we're lucky our president is a not very intelligent liar. So now, we wait now to find out which of two things will happen first. Either the courts will force the White House to share the whistleblower's information, or Vladimir Putin's intelligence service will track the whistleblower down and serve him a bacon, lettuce, and plutonium sandwich. <laughs> Meanwhile, Melania Trump had a busy day. She was part of a ribbon-cutting ceremony for the grand reopening of the Washington Monument. Uh, you can see here, there she is with a bunch of kids. They count it down, and she tries her be-best to cut that ribbon, but it doesn't go as she'd hoped, and a guy tries to give her a hand with that, but uh, anyway, she's like, no, and then she's smiling. Watch her face here, because you go up, and uh, let's... So let's look at that again, if we zoom in on that, and uh, you can see smile, smile, bedroom face. <laughs> Poor Melania. He's, he is definitely not voting for Trump. I am Jimmy Kimmel. I hope you enjoyed that video. Hit subscribe, and all your dreams will come true, assuming your dreams are to watch more YouTube videos.